wanted to tell you a story, but I couldn't think which one to tell. Uh, should it be the bear story? That would be fun. Or, or what about the one where I climbed Long's Peak? Or oh, there's any number of stories I could t I could tell you the biography of a chicken. <laughs> um, oh, I have two biographies of chickens actually. One, one's a rooster and the other's a hen. Um, but I, I decided that probably what you would really prefer would be to, for me uh, to give you a story about Stan and I living together for 30 years and, and uh, our marriage. And, uh, but I, I haven't written it. So I thought I would just tell it to you as, uh, and uh, in, in maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll watch these films and after that we can have some questions and answers and uh, I, I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, before we met, Stan and I were both just at the bottom. We were both wrecks, adolescent wrecks, as, as, as adolescents tend to be, especially if they're sensitive. Uh, I was a uh, college dropout who had no notion what I was going to do or, or what there was that I'd be interested to do. And uh, Stan was uh, making anticipation of the night where he was looking forward to uh, the, the final sequence where he could get up on a chair. Oops. Hush. <laughs> okay, uh, am I still there? <laughs> um, get up on a chair, put a rope around his neck, and then uh, and photograph the, 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 the shadow man on the wall and then step off the chair so that he would be photographing his own suicide. But so that when we met, we were really, uh, we really needed each other badly. And uh, we were, we needed hope. And we were hope, we were each hope for the other. So it was very good. It was quite uh, a relief for both of us. Uh, he was 24 and I was 21. And, uh, uh, within two months, I was pregnant, and uh, uh, he was saying we should go to New York. I'd like to go to New York. I've got friends there, he said, and maybe he could get a job there. So, uh, so, uh, well, we got we got close. Is the thing we got close, and uh, and we were talking with each other. Uh, about how how we were thinking about things and 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 I realized that I didn't do anything. <laughs> I, I realized that uh, it doesn't want me to turn the scroll. I think and I have to. I have to. <laughs> um, I realized that he served the muse. He was making films in the service of the muse. And uh, he felt strongly about that. And for a while, for quite a while, I didn't understand until he started talking about listening to the angels. And uh, th then I thought, well, he's, he's trying to say something. He's, he's, and I think what he was talking about I think you could say, you take what you're given and you work with that. It isn't that you say, well, I didn't want it that way. I'll have to do it over. He didn't do that. He would, he would get a roll of film from Western Cine in Denver and he would open it and look at it in trepidations, not, not knowing what was coming and, and he would work with that. And, also, uh, I, I just feel like intuition got involved, even psychic senses and 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 whatnot. We were we were keeping in touch with with the vibes of the world and and working with that. So that 
has become my my way of getting around, and and I I must say I recommend it. It's 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 quite mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's quite wonderful and adventurous to accept what is given and to work with it. Um, let's see now, where am I? Uh, I got pregnant, yes, as we got close, that's good. And uh, well, by this time, of course, I was uh, getting more and more pregnant and we were by that time in in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. And, and we went there and, and found a doctor who would, oh, I left out. I left out the, the earlier thing where he said to me shortly after we got married, okay, now now you should take off all your clothes and, and we will make a, uh, a film about having sex. And I said, I beg your pardon, I, I'm a good girl and, and I, I don't do that kind of thing. And, and, uh, um, and wh what are you talking about? And this is some kind of a joke. And he said, no, I'm an artist and, and an artist has to have a nude. And that's <laughs> all there is to it. <laughs> uh, and, and you can look back on the arts for thousands of years and it's true. They all have nudes and... and uh, um, well, not all of them, but uh, a lot of them. Um, so uh, I, I, I had just seen the Venus of Willendorf in a magazine and read a little article about her, and, and I realized that he was talking about her and and others you know and be, between but since since her and and uh, like the one that standing on a on a seashell and and uh, a lot of uh, the one descending the staircase and so on uh, so I thought well I think I I have an opportunity to join a a group of people that I uh, quite admire and uh, I think <laughs> so I stripped and went to it <laughs> uh, so the baby was was born in Princeton. It was a great joy. I I loved having babies. It was a it was a great pleasure. You have to really relax into it, and it's just like I was saying before. You take what's given, and you go with it. You you ride it. You, you just really seriously take it, and and say that's that's reality. So. That was uh, that we were moving around a lot at that time. Uh, we'd stay in a place for a few months, and then we would move on, and we'd try to have each baby uh, in Colorado if we could. We had five, you know, and uh, uh, but in the meantime, we were meeting people. We were meeting the most wonderful people, artists, really dynamic people, really thinking, strong, I inspired people, people that I just adored on sight and so on. I, I've always had a problem with n not being able to keep up with the conversation, not to, I mean, not that I couldn't understand it, but that I couldn't say what I wanted to say. Uh, but So I was quite a listener and I developed a, a fantastic skill at listening and, and, uh, and so people appreciated that about me but I was a little frustrated about being, because I had things to say. But uh, we went on uh, with it and, and finally, uh, oh gosh, I'm way behind myself here now. Yeah, we finally, we finally came to Lump Gulch and had the fifth baby and settled down. The kids were getting big and we were going to have to send them to school. Uh, there was a school bus that would pick them up and take them to Netherland down the road and uh, they went to school from grade 1 to grade 12 uh, on that school bus. So. Um, that was uh, that was kind of wonderful. Uh, they, uh, I did realize that we probably would never have enough money to send them to school. Uh, we were going to put the, you know, the food, the food, the food, and the the gas in the car, and the film, the film, the film, and. Uh, 
He was very frugal with this film. As I say, that system of thinking to take what you have and work with it made it made him use up I mean he had very few scraps he had very few outtakes it was amazing uh, let's see where am I oh yes uh, as soon as we we got to the to Lump Gulch I realized that we were going to need a uh, big table and that kitchen would hold a 10-foot table but there was no way we were going to buy a table. So I went and bought some split logs and some uh, long pieces of firewood and uh, I went to work with a chisel. My father taught me how to chisel. He was, uh, uh, he was a good carpenter and uh, he, was not, he was also a teacher, but uh, he, knew what, he knew how to do things with wood. and. Uh, he taught me, and so for, I, I spent six months working on that table and, and, and nursing the baby and raising the kids and, and minding Stan and taking care of whatever the films and, and all that stuff. But uh, when we finally stood it up, there it was, and we, uh, I hadn't, I forgot to mention that all these people that we were meeting we were corresponding, Stan was corresponding with them. Of course, I was the silent partner, uh, but uh, Stan was corresponding with them, and they had, they'd send these beautiful letters or beautiful poems or pictures or um, rolls of film or uh, things like that. And, uh, and uh, well, I don't remember rolls of film, actually, but uh, just paper stuff that I, all during our travels, that I collected them in a box because I, Stan was, you know, thinking, well, we should really throw these things away because we are living in a car, right? And uh, no, I didn't want to do that. I, ha I had a box, and so that was a box, the box of my jewels of the mind. And so then when we turned the table over and stood it up and it was level, thank God, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought out a, an empty scrapbook and, and brought out my box of the jewels of the mind and, and uh, put them together. Uh, I had a, another little scrapbook, not that much smaller, but uh, for the kids to work on and, and to fill that up. So we were like two sets of working, of working scrapbooks. And this went on actually for like uh, three, four, five, three, uh, three or four years, I guess. Uh, we were making scrapbooks, and now my scrapbooks are uh, housed at Yale, and um, they are, uh, they are, uh, Yale has put them on the web. So you can look them up on your computer if you care to. <laughs> so, uh, an another great thing now am I, have I caught up with myself? Yeah, I think so. Another great thing about living at Lump Gulch was that we could have animals. Um, we had uh, uh, a lot of animals, actually, in the back uh, yard. Um, geese and chickens and, and uh, well, at one period we had rabbits and, and, and we had uh, goats and it was wonderful, actually. I, I loved each one of those too. The, uh, they, uh, we would go for walks sometimes with with uh, the goats and the dogs and the donkey, and we'd go off into the mountains and and wander about and and uh, and of course find meadows to graze in or whatnot. But uh, we were just w wandering. We were walking on because they they got enough food, really. But. It was nice to graze, I'm sure. I, I assure you that it was. And, uh, so, uh, I, I, the thing, uh, one thing I like about animals is that I look at them and I can see uh, by their gestures and by the way they, they, they carry themselves how they feel about the world around them, how they react, how they care about it. I, I just feel it's a, 
I, I think a lot about how animals are, and they are they 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 are profound. Every one of them, even like even the chicken, even mice. You know, uh, the snake was profound. Anyway, um, for a few years there, we were extraordinarily poor. Um, Stan would go out and uh, do a lecture or, or a lecture tour uh, and bring home some money and then we would like fill up the kitchen with food and, and, and the gas, the car with gas and then, and then he'd buy film and, and, and then I'll take care of it and, and so then we'd eat that food and <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, it was uh, sort of, uh, it wasn't ever riches, but it was certainly where we'd, we'd go down and up again. But uh, then he got the job at uh, Chicago uh, Art Institute, and um, he was going for uh, two or three days out of every two weeks. And um, the money came in. Oh. That was nice. Uh, money came in, and and we were able to relax about that. Uh, for all the time we were living in Lump Gulch, we we became. It was like that table was was the navel of the universe, or or something. It was. People came. People came, they would go to a lot of trouble to come and visit us and talk with Stan and, and maybe take a walk with me and the goats out on the mountainside or, or get to know the kids or, or whatever. Uh, and of course, look at films and read poetry and, and uh, talk about art uh, and uh, argue about aesthetics and, and uh, whatever. Uh, it was people came they just kept coming and it was just a grand thing and my kids really appreciated having all those visitors coming like who's coming now who is that i've never seen that person before you know and, and uh what will they say what will they be like and and so they were interested in that um as to the work stan and i worked together really a lot uh all through the 60s and into the 70s it was uh, it was uh, it was we were dancing together we were I would I would bring him things and he would photograph them I would show him like I would bring him a baby he photographed every baby not just one <laughs> oh. and and I, and then the there would be like the mountains I would I would show him that and and uh, uh, I would show him the things I'd show him. He would he would open himself to. It was like he could say, "Okay, if Jane likes it, it must have some virtue. You know, it can't be too mean to me. I mean, it'll be all right, won't it?" And and the camera would help. Always he would hold the camera <laughs> between him and the thing he feared. Like that's why he took pictures of all the children being born. He was like it was he it was something to hold on to but of course it made him do his his thing he had to make a film then so that was uh, wonderful uh, we were together a lot and and we worked together in tandem and uh, of course I was doing the business too and uh, uh, except for what he was doing like on the phone uh, but uh, um, Anyway, uh, we, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes. But somewhere in the 70s, uh, he took his camera and went to town and said, no, don't come. And, um, I, so, uh, and then just about that time, my three teenage daughters, they had grown up to be teenagers, as uh, time does pass, and, and they were teenagers now, and, and they said, you know, would you back off 
I'm, we're, we're like teenagers now. We, we know how to cross the street. Leave, leave us alone and, and, and uh, let us blossom each as we should. And, and I saw the truth in that, of course, and, and I thought, you know, I'm rejected on all sides. What am I going to do? I have got to do something myself. And I thought, dang, gonna, I do know, I do have something to say. I do. I can write. I can write. And um, I was 39 years old then, and and so I I started writing, and I I wrote stories about things that happened to me. I wrote stories about my animals. I wrote uh, uh, all kinds of things. I I asked. I interviewed the neighbors, and I asked them, "Could you tell me the history of Lump Gulch?" And they would they'd give me these outrageous stories that from the history of Lump Gulch and I made the the book uh, Lump Gulch Tales and uh, so there were a lot of short stories and and uh, and then I I did write the Wolf Dictionary uh, I had always as a child wanted to uh, write a dog dictionary because I knew what dogs were saying and other people didn't and I thought if I could write a dictionary but the problem was that what they were saying was in movement it was in in subtleties and so it was best to write a narrative and then explain what happened and also it was best to grab this wonderful story that was told to me by some of the neighbors about wolves and uh, so, uh, then there was uh, this Brackage's childhood. I asked him, uh, please tell me about your child. Uh, give me all your wonderful anecdotes about your childhood in a, in a row so that I can see what caused what. You know, and, and uh, of course he was really down on narrative, but I was very <laughs> up on it. But that's that's the thing. Uh, uh, he uh, he. So he'd tell me one uh, one chapter. He would tell me about his birth, and I would. I had a notepad, and I would write down like two or three words. Um, say to say one paragraph. And uh, just like uh, this is two or three words for each item, and and uh, and and then I would I would write that all out, and and then I would go and immediately and and write it up. Now I left out the bitterness, his bitterness against his mother, or most of it. I and um, I also cut out his sophistication, his his 50-year-old sophistication. And I tried to write it in a tone that would be more like how a child thinks. That is, that'd be in my tone, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah. Uh, um, it's kind of in my tone. I mean, I, w I was not certainly talking to a child here in this book, but uh, I was talking from the child. So, uh, but, and, and during this time that, 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 uh, that we were doing that, um, Stan was reading to us all from uh, the Tolkien. He started with The Hobbit and he read and read. It took about a year and a half. And, and actually interviewing him took about two years. And, uh, 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 it was it was great all the way from the Hobbit to the end and and uh, I was making a a rug at the time I was stitching a rug and and the kids wanted to stitch a rug too and so I gave them a rug uh, backing and and taught them how to how to stitch a rug and that one that they made is on the wall in the cabin mine that I made I think we I put it on the floor and it got messed up and ruined but uh, then uh, he, he'd been also at the same time in a way he was like 
being kindly as he was fading away and, and spending much more time in town. And finally he got an apartment in town and um, I wasn't invited and somebody else was living there with him and I realized, okay, it's over. And um, so I, I, you know, put the house, I had to, the worst thing I ever did was, was to find homes for my all my animals. That was just really painful and hard. It still hurts me, but uh, the looks, the look that Godot the goat gave me was, mm -hmm. as it burns in my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, got things uh, going in that way, got rid of all the animals and got, got the house up for sale and, and was still looking for a lawyer to divorce him and, and then uh, got into my car and took off and drove all around the nation. I tried to touch every uh, every state and, and get a sense of, of different areas. And uh, of course, I had to stop in California two or three places and and uh, and and stay there a while. I would I would stay there for. Uh, like maybe a few weeks or maybe uh, just overnight I'd have to leave before six in the morning so that I wouldn't get get scolded by the owner or it was it, I was living in my car I the seat went back and I slept there uh, and that's what I was doing for two and a half years and it was a great occasion I and I wrote a book called drive about uh, covering that uh, that time in my life uh, I've been writing uh, since then. Um, I am now working on uh, a, a brief history of the world, of the earth, uh, and uh, I'm really having a, a fun time finding the adventures that the earth has gone through and, and, and there, you know, then multicellular life is come, has come at, coming at the last minute. And, Anyway, <laughs> so that that's it. I think I, I uh, would like to thank you very much for listening to me, and we will uh, we will look at the films, and then I will be very happy to answer questions after the films. I was um, for ten years a professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, where I began researching in the James Stanley Brackage paper archive at the university there. And uh, through that, I got to know Jane, and I've been conducting a series of interviews with Jane over the last few years. And I'm so pleased we were able to bring you here for this show. Um, and I now consider you a dear friend. And I have many things to ask you, but I'm gonna restrict myself to two or three things because I'm sure you all have a lot of questions. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to ask you about is the Barbara Hammer film, actually, from 1974. Um, I've asked you about this in some interviews, but maybe you could tell everyone a little bit about Barbara's visit to your home then and what that was like. And maybe you can also um, explain how Stan was there, but she excluded him from that film. <laughs> well, well. He he went off and, and was working upstairs and and so uh, he he escaped. I don't, I don't know if she. I mean she. Uh, he excluded himself, I believe, also. So I think they agreed on that score. Uh, uh, I was very shy and and I I was sitting on that uh, stove uh, that old old. Uh, wood-burning cook stove, uh, as that was my uh, place where I was secure <laughs> for s unknown reason. But uh, uh, she was shy also, and uh, what what struck me particularly about her was that she just really didn't understand the camera like Stan did. She was uh, she was working with her tripod and and she was setting it up and she was like um, 
it, it was, uh, it, she was a student of the camera and she had a, a lot of ways to go to get uh, in touch and have the camera be part of her or she to be part of the camera or whatever anyway they were not yet uh, really close friends and uh, I wasn't used to that I was used to stand you know like moving about and, and uh, uh, she uh, also she wanted me to talk <laughs> That was astonishing and, and uh, unusual, and, and uh, I, uh, I was quite startled and, and thrilled, and, and I t tried to talk as well as I could. There was one thing that, 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 uh, that troubled me with that was uh, uh, that I said that the, the chickadees particularly are uh, concerned about what I'm wearing, and I later found that that was not so. <laughs> and so every time I see it, I wince, you know, like, <laughs> and it's all my fault, too, so. Uh, okay, what else? You well, you were still learning about the chickadees at that point. I would, and, oh, I, I'm always and, learning about everything, yeah. And Barbara, at the time, was a student in the MFA program at uh -huh. San Francisco State, yeah. so she was also she, just learning, and I think. She was learning. Uh -huh. She was learning through Stan's films, yeah. but she was so fascinated by is, you Is this thing well. working at all? Yeah, is that working? Uh, yeah. Uh, but can you hear? Good. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to show. It you my I think voice. they can hear you. So yeah. without it. Okay. Oh, yeah. you it really without yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Take it off. You're free. <laughs> yeah, you're free. Yeah. It might it might go well with. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. The second question I wanted to ask you, which I didn't warn you about, but mm -hmm. as I was watching this, I thought it would be worth having you talk to everyone about this. Um, is about how Stan didn't view himself as a nature boy per se, right? That, oh, that in fact, not. he always described himself as a city boy. Mm -hmm. And I view you as the person who was a kind of connection for him to nature. So when we think of his films, we think of Colorado and the mountains, nature. But a lot of that was you, and you, in fact, brought him to live in Lump Gulch. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I did a little bit in my speech. I talked mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, how I brought him things, and mm -hmm. and then he would film them because it was almost uh, um, uh, like I was in, uh, well, <coughs> as I, I said, I was willing to become of service to the muse, and I was of service to the muse in bringing him things, too. And uh, uh, he was, he, um, well, we made Dog Star Man uh, early on, and he was climbing the mountain. He was, he was doing the best he could. I think he did rather well there, and uh, that was fine. So um, he was, he was open to seeing nature through his camera. He was not really interested in, in reveling in it or anything, but he liked to see it through his camera. So that was how he reveled, I guess. But uh, uh, how's that? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more to say about that, but maybe I'll, I'll move There's on. There's a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we you can go on and on, but on I, I'm not good at monologues. Sure. <laughs> um, we can maybe talk about that if someone asks about the film creation as well. But I wanted to ask you about the Nick Dorsky film, the last film that uh -huh. we watched. Yeah. I know you're a good friend of his, yeah. and you have this great friendship. So can you tell us a little bit about the filming of that in Denver last year with you? Well, uh, as you can see, the, 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 the majority of the film was, is, was taken elsewhere mm -hmm. and whatnot, but uh, as, as we... Uh, and there was an early, early tree that was from the same the same field, uh, same area in the film. Uh, but uh, I, w I was uh, uh, Nick was was in in Den in Boulder for uh, just a couple of days, and and I was uh, sick with a with an allergy those couple of days, and so I really had to work hard to uh, see his films properly and and uh, 
but I we did manage to go out and shoot. Uh, so uh, he would he he would say, uh, okay, get behind those branches there, and and. Uh, he didn't tell me what to do, of course, and, and I didn't want to just stand there. Uh, so I, I started looking at the branches, and, and I, I, um, I, I, found, I, fo I found that there was a, um, a problem that one of the trees was ill, uh, so I've worried about it ever since, but um, he, he was... Uh, he was uh, such a contrast from Stan. Uh, he, he, uh, Dorsky is a very gentle soul and and uh, and polite and everything. And, uh, and uh, uh, but also precise, incredibly precise. He wanted just that, and and he wanted it to happen naturally. And so I had to somehow psych into what he wanted and do it. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the name of the, I can't remember if it's exactly the appreciation of the sun in winter or the warmth of the sun in winter, mm -hmm. but it's one of those two. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. he was uh, con referring to his and my old age, and I was, uh, uh, and and we were we were appreciating the sun or ourselves or. We were pushing our our winter, our winter. So, so the word apricity, which is the title, is apricity. that a neologism? Yeah, yeah I didn't see it, it there, yeah. shown there. Yeah, no, it's not in the film. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's ask for questions. I will field the questions. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, could you talk a little bit about creation? Where was that made, and what was the circumstances? Good. I'm glad you brought up creation. I. What was the question about? Where was it made, and what were the circumstances? That's a, that's really. Uh, when I saw it on on YouTube uh, a couple of months ago, I saw something. I saw mountains flashing by, and this time. I didn't see that. I saw wh what had, what we had seen in. Uh, wh we went to Juno in the early 70s, and uh, we went. We took a plane. Uh, you know, you, that's how you go anywhere. You took a plane. We took a plane to uh, uh, Glacier Bay and got on a boat, and and we were like there amongst the ice flows and, and, and the seals and, and, and the glaciers coming down and, and uh, that, that was in the early 70s. We, uh, the only thing that really troubles me about th that film is there is a shot of penguins and <laughs> penguins are in uh, uh, Antarctica, <laughs> not in Alaska. So, I don't know how that got there, but I'm sure Stan wouldn't do that. Yeah, uh. I didn't see any penguins. I saw seals in, in this one. But the interesting thing about creation is, so I, um, I in the paper archive, there's a very clear paper trail of Jane's arranging of the business and the, the basically the production of that film. And so one of the reasons I wanted to program it tonight is, of course, it's a gorgeous film and it's not on any of the Blu-rays. It is on YouTube, as you say, but it looks <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, so, and it's really interesting to watch films about glaciers now as they're melting rapidly. But also, this is getting back to that question of the connection between you and nature and Stan and nature. And I do feel that this is sort of a gift that you gave to him and you Yes, I, I, I agree. Now that yeah. I see the film yeah. as a film, um, I, <coughs> I agree. Uh, uh, <coughs> although, uh, what, what was happening was, you know, we both went to Juno, we both went to Glacier Bay, and I was looking at, at things, and he was looking at things, <laughs> and uh, there we were, like side by side. So he was like, it was he was absorbing it. For there, it was as all so as I was saying earlier about like um, intuition and 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 being together in a in a way that 
you you understand what the other one is saying and uh, without saying anything. Um, he he was seeing what I was seeing, and he was uh, and it, he really was in a way seeing what I was seeing. Like the uh, I, I I really can't fault him in in any of the of his shots uh, as far as my view goes. So. <laughs> Uh, we were together, yeah. And it's such a gorgeous landscape film. Um, and it's a film, in many ways, I see as a sort of landscape version of Window Water Baby Moving because it's about creation, but it's about the Earth's creation rather than the creation of another human. But again, this is all connected to your life with him. Um, and then there's that one shot of you in it, and then a very quick shot of your hands. It's the only two shots of you, but he includes you in that film, which is very interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I don't, yeah. Towards the end of uh -huh. your relationship, yeah. it's 1979. So. Well, no, it wasn't toward the end. I mean, we didn't break up until uh, a, a mid 80s. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was another hand. Yeah. Um. I'm just curious how you feel about um, seeing yourself now on screen. You know, you mentioned the window water, mm -hmm. that especially that film. Like how does it make you feel? Do you watch that film? When I watch which film? Window. Window water, baby moving. Oh, have you seen it? Do you see it still, or is it hard for you to watch it? Or I, I'm just no, curious. No, no, it's 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 fine. It, it was, as I say, it was a very pleasant experience for me. Um, I, I don't have negative feelings about having babies. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, I remember the, the shots. I remember the, uh, uh, the conversations. I remember, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's in a way look, like looking at an old scrapbook or something, but um, also it's it's a good film. It's well made and stuff. Uh, it, it's kind of jerky, but uh, oh, w another thing I'm, I think about, which people don't probably anymore so much, but we were uh, we were participating in a uh, a new push for natural childbirth, mm -hmm. and uh, so the uh, doctor was very excited about being part of that. Mm -hmm because he approved of it and, and there was a, I don't know, there was a, a class that you could take and learn how to breathe properly so that it, it, it works better and stuff. So it was, uh, it, it was a, a, a very nice memory. And also Stan filmed all five of the childbirths and all five of them are on film and can be seen, that's right. although that's the most famous one. Uh, but you have talked to me before about how you felt like he never really captured you in these films, and you've said this also in interviews. Well, well I, I, I think, you know, I was representing the woman, uh, and uh, so I, w I was doing my job, uh, but, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he didn't, he, uh, like, uh, uh, he wasn't interested in getting the real me, you know, it, well, that wasn't what he was trying to photograph. Over there. Hi. <laughs> oh, is that too neat? Yeah. <laughs> White light. Um, I'm just curious. We're talking so much about your connection to nature and how you introduced it to Stan, but I, I'm curious about um, sort of like how did you fall in love with nature? What was your early life like, and how did you, you know, did you grow up in Colorado or, um, oh. you know, just how did you what? start your relationship with nature? Well, um, um, how did I first meet him? That, oh, that, that's, uh, that's... No, she's that's asking about nature and your connection with, with nature, nature. and yeah. my connection with nature? Is yeah, not Stan, uh, but nature. Fall in love with nature. I yeah. thought you were falling, having me fall in love with Stan. But no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, falling in love with nature, I... Uh, uh, when I was an infant, I, I, uh, my m mother uh, was very busy, and she had me in a room with a uh, little dog. And that little dog and I 
I don't remember it, of course, but I think I learned dog language first before I learned English. <laughs> and uh, that opened me to a, a world of, of animals, particularly that uh, got me going in, in the direction towards nature. Uh, there's dogs first. Dogs first. So they're very lovable creatures anyway, but uh, uh, so I fell in love with that dog, I guess, but uh, as I say, uh, he, she was, uh, uh, they got rid of her when she had some pups and, and uh, uh, I was three or four years old by then and didn't need the same kind of care and, and I, I, uh, I lost her. But I, 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 by that time I knew so that by the, when I was five, I could tell you, I, uh, there's a story that I wrote in one of the books up th that we're selling. Uh, do we have any left? Uh, mm -hmm. um, I think so, yeah. The, there was a dog that, when I was five, that uh, was a, a biting dog. He, she, he bit everybody, uh, um, and uh, I was uh, walking up the alley very depressed because nobody wanted to talk to me, nobody loved me, there was nobody to play with, there was nobody, nothing, it was, and I was five years old and I needed all that stuff. And and then this dog started barking and snarling at me and, 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 uh, and I could see that that dog was as lonely as I was. And so I... <laughs> I I I got you know close without getting in in uh, uh, in danger and 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 uh, reached my hand towards him so that he could smell my hand, but not not touch it. And uh, slowly, 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 I I quieted him down just by my just by the smell of my hand being there, and uh, and he was. Be more and more interested in me because he could, he could smell me and 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 he wanted me. He was then his eyes were starting to close a little bit and he wanted me to pet him on the cheek and I did. Mm -hmm. I petted him on the cheek and he, uh, uh, he was, he was my dear friend for a few years, uh, but. Uh, he was, he was went on being a biting dog with everybody else <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't tr turn him around <laughs> so it's, i hope you got that <laughs> yeah i was just wondering about the the mikas film i uh, just wondering what the story was behind that was mikas a frequent <coughs> house guest or was did he come specifically to make that he that i film? think he I think he was making that film, and he came specifically to make that. He was. Uh, 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 I particularly remember the trip uh, to the Beaver Dam, and uh, and how he got distracted by rabbit shit. <laughs> 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 uh, but I thought we had actually gone to the Beaver Dam. At least we looked down on it. I think. But uh, no, he he came that one time. He uh, we. Uh, I, I was really pleased to see him too uh, coming and he he was acting silly in the woods and I wished he'd come back often but uh, um, uh, we we met him mostly in New York City uh, yeah. others there's one right yeah who made the shots of Stan in the first picture they don't seem to be in a mirror Maybe they were. I, I, I Did think he ever operate them? That he was he was a master of selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Before selfies were invented, I mean he could he could set it up and and uh, and flick the switch and hold the switch down and and then you know act like he was <laughs> just waking up or something. <laughs> You mean uh, in Cat's Cradle, the oh first yeah. Was, yeah, that yeah. was that yeah. was that uh, was Jim Tenney and Carol Schneemann, I guess you all know that, and uh, and Kitch the cat, and Kitch, Kitch the cat, uh, who was, uh, um, she stayed in, as though she was she was acting as though she were in heat for the whole two weeks that we were there visiting. It was quite, uh, it was quite strange. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, Stan had this mystical way of handling his 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 people. Yeah. Um, I saw some images of your children operating the camera. Did any of any of your children grow up to be filmmakers, or did they make go into films? The, my my two sons. Um, um, the eldest um, bear uh, made a, a couple of films, just beautiful little films, and I I have them on on DVD. Uh, but uh, he quit doing it um, because he was confusing. I mean, there was like a competitive feeling or something. Like uh, he he didn't want to rock Stan's boat. Um, the younger son uh, became very excited uh, about still photography and and was was doing some very uh, uh, interesting uh, still photography. Um, but then then I th think he lost his camera or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, they, there was a, there was m mild attempts that didn't pan out, but they were both talented. <laughs> Yes. Uh, my question is about the, uh, the scrapbook uh, from the website from the library. It seems like there are three books uh, around 900 pages from 1958 to 1967. My question was like, what uh, what happened? Like, why did you stop at 1967? Or are there more of this sort of like souvenir material between you and Stan? Just not getting published yet. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. So <laughs> when you made the scrapbooks uh, and then you stopped making them, uh, why did why did you not continue making them? Right? Is that kind of to I yeah. think um, at that time everybody got busy making money, <laughs> and uh, and it cut back on the uh, the constancy of the, of, of communication it really cut back on the amount of mail we got and also I think Stan was was filing these letters now mm -hmm. and and thinking okay we're going to make an archive yeah. and we're going to you know be somebody and uh, mm -hmm. so that's uh, it, it just um, but the there was another reason too and that was that there was maybe a five-year time of magic, of where everybody was aglow with with this leap into, okay, we are artists, we we are, and, and isn't that exciting? And and we're going we're we're going to take over the world and change it, and the world won't know what it what's happened they you know it's something like it was a time uh, in which we were all happy together and then then everybody kind of grew up another notch and 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 they had families that they had to feed and and they got jobs that were responsible and and uh, so they had to change it didn't it wasn't so sparkly after that. And the archive is amazing. I encourage anyone who's interested to yeah. go. It's open to anyone who yes. wants to use it at the University of Colorado Boulder. And it's an, a remarkable archive because they also made carbon copies of your letters that you wrote to others. So it has a two-way correspondence, which is unusual in a paper yeah. archive. So it's, it's great. It's massive. Yeah, I have, my archive is in Yale now. So uh, if you want my archive, that's where it's at. So is Barbara Hammer's paper archive as well. Is in mm -hmm. Yale also, mm -hmm. uh-huh, yeah. and, and Gertrude Stein. And, yeah. and uh, all the uh, important women. Some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, um, okay. I think Ezra Pound too, I'm uh, not sure. Anybody else? Yes? Uh, how, how did you and Stan first meet? Uh, didn't get a chance to say. How did you first meet Stan? Uh, 
We met uh, three times before he acknowledged my presence. <laughs> <laughs> the first time was I was on a date with uh, uh, somebody named Ron, and we were at the matinee of the um, uh, operetta, one of the Gilbert and Sullivan operettas, and, and uh, we came, and this was uh, at Central City, Colorado, which is, does, does operas and theater of all kinds, really up to the, the top stuff, but this was, you know, uh, a, an afternoon's entertainment, and we came out of the, op of the opera house and there were these two young men sword fighting out on the street. They were sword fighting with, with sticks, you know, and, and they were just uh, going at it. And, and, and one was, seemed to be shoving the other one down the street and, and uh, the, the one that was backing up was Stan and the one above was Larry Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they were uh, classmates in high school, and this was the year after high school. They had um, Stan being the director, uh, of course, um, had de developed, uh, had had set up a tent theater in Central City that would just the schedule would just begin after the whatever was going on in the, in the opera house. And uh, the problem was that my date had another date. That <laughs> and so we couldn't go uh, to this tent theater. But um, the second time was I was, uh, I, I, I was in New York City in 1956, I think, and uh, I had a job adding up columns of figures. And I, for my lunch, I would go, I, it was right by the Rockefeller Center, so for lunch I would go into Rockefeller Center and, uh, and uh, poke around and and um, I saw finally there was a mall down underneath Rockefeller Center, so I went down there and I went into the, looked around, and oh, there was a bookshop, a bookshop, a Brentano's bookshop, and, and I went in and I wanted to buy some couple of books, and I, I, uh, I got the books and I went up to the cash register, and there was this, this absolutely thrilling man, young man that was very glum, and um, glowering, and he wouldn't look at me, and I, I handed him the books, and I was trying to get his attention, <laughs> and, and uh, I, I, I failed. He, he gave me my change and, and put, my, put the books in, in, in a package and handed them to me, and, and I, what, I had to leave. Um, the third time was uh, uh, I was uh, dating the... Uh, 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 this man named Gladney Oakley, who was uh, the, uh, uh, he was the manager of um, uh, the uh, experimental film group at the University of Colorado. And I can't remember how I met him, but he, he said uh, to me one time, well, I think that you're a responsible and a decent person and I could in introduce you to a genius. I know a genius, and I would like to introduce you to this genius. And I don't know why he wanted to introduce me to him, but uh, uh, we went, and and uh, there was this uh, this sickly uh, <laughs> man who um, that was just kind of crooked and sickly, and you've seen him being looking sick, uh, uh, and. Uh, he had just come home from the uh, hospital where he was having asthma really bad, and um, I, uh, I, I was tired, and I, I had dressed all up, but the, I, was, I wanted to sit in that comfortable chair that that cat was sitting in. And um, I, I said, you know, I, I want to sit in the chair. No, that that cat is is sitting in it. So no, you. And I, said, no. I said you have a neurotic cat, and he uh, remembered that 
particular statement of mine until he died. <laughs> uh, I, I, oh, and then he started teaching classes. Uh, in, he started getting a little healthier and he was teaching classes at the University of Colorado. So um, my cousin and I went to uh, to uh, join those classes and I remember making a, a little strip of white leader with with a, a leaf curling and moving and that, that I knew how to make it move properly and, and and I got a little praise from him for that that was so great that was so um, then after the classes were over then I, I uh, uh, well, no we did a field trip and and we stood under a tree and 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 you know those vibes Happened. There was this electricity between us, and and I, we didn't say much or anything. And then I went away, and I waited for the phone call, and it didn't come. And and then I got really depressed, and um, I was driving up Boulder Canyon towards my parents' house where I was living, and and I my eyes saw my hands turn the wheel towards the cliff's edge, and I. T you know, there was this parts of me telling the other parts of me to, to straighten this out and make a change, and I did manage to continue on driving. And um, then I wrote him a letter, and I said, I'm, I'm in trouble, and I, I uh, wonder if you can help me. And uh, he, I guess he called me up, and he told me he loved me. Um, and um, I said, well, I'll come right over. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> I have to recommend Jane's book, uh, Stan uh, Brackage's Childhood. If, if you don't know about it or haven't read it yet, it is a phenomenal account of Stan's childhood, but told through Jane's own words. So as she has put it, it was you working in your medium after having worked in his medium film for so long. That he was, he was actually uh, being the, bringing me the, the stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For my medium, as I had brought him the stuff for his medium, yeah. and uh, it was just pretty perfect. It's a great book. Okay, thank you so much, Jane. We love that you came here. Okay, I have.